So I want to explain why this workshop has started. Um, my colleague, uh, Professor Kasahara, uh, is an expert of genome assembly, developing genome assembly. And he is also um, uh, good at developing distributed processing systems. So I, I talked with him and what kind of system is needed for the future of genome sciences. And so, and, and that, that is the beginning of this workshop. So I want to, him to talk about the future of general distributed processing program systems, but unfortunately, unfortunately, he had a cold <laughs> this thing. today. He couldn't come. I'm sorry about that. Um, but um, I want to show. Um, okay, so the purpose of this workshop is to share the knowledge on what is needed in general informatics. And fortunately, uh, we have three invited speakers, Kawaii uh, Sensei invited uh, at the BBCLS, Ratgar and, I'm sorry for, um, Alec and Ratgar and Kohan. <coughs> we talk about um, what bioinformatics, several applications of bioinformatics. And I, and also, I will introduce about what is needed for managing large gen data sets. Um, because, um, due to the emergence of the next generation sequencers, we have to manage a massive amount of data in recent years. So, <coughs> and the data size makes it difficult to analyze. Um, uh, analyze and general big data information and also simply and writing program for processing such a set set that the data set is also difficult. So I want to explain what is difficult in processing such a data set. And also I invited uh, com several computer scientists. Uh, Professor Tawa is an expert of RL and security processing. So I want to know this, what is the state of the art and techniques to process massive amount of data in powder and powder. And also I want to deepen the understanding of what is difficult in making your standard programs out of this uh, the my, um, my objective for organizing this workshop is to, I want to find a solution, a solution for efficiently processing large data sets. And so I hope in this workshop we can discuss uh, this topic from various aspects, uh, from system side of view and also application side of view. Uh, or uh, bioinformatic applications such as genome alignment, genome assembly, or comparative genomics, and so on. And also, because of next generation sequence, so even a biologist has to write a simple program. So, but these people are usually not good at writing program or distributed programming. So, we have to know what is necessary for such a big beginner of programming um, is needed to write these parallel programs. <coughs> so I hope um, you, you can make questions at any time for, to, um, <coughs> to share the knowledge and share the understanding. Various people are gathering here, so there's no need. <laughs> No need to mind uh, if you um, the level of knowledge is different for each people. So we have to um, share the understanding between various areas: computer science, bioinformatics, and biology. <coughs> so here is a program today. Uh, I took a fast. Then uh, at ten fifteen, I 
and what the project about. Um, uh, I is a project leader of Biomark. <coughs> we, we talk about how to manage various kinds of data sets, how to provide a data set to users. And we, to go, we talk about compatible genomics. <laughs> and yeah, his title is catchy, how to make a monkey <laughs> The functional adaptation in the prime and gem. So the complete program is here. So you can access the internet using this this SSRE and password in this room. And after the lunch break, uh, the afternoon session will start 1.50. It's just a plan. So <coughs> in the afternoon session, Go around and talk about text mining for us. I'm not sure the exact exact title. <laughs> it's go on here. Is this okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at from two. Uh, so Masahara, Masahara Tadahiro is absent, so <laughs> Professor Tawa will talk about so we think we should. Screen resolution is not correct. Okay, I have to change. Professor Tawa will talk about GXP and its uh, um, environment, a kind of power processing environment, which makes you easy to write um, distributed workflow. And our shower up. Our team uses this too frequently. <laughs> and it really makes it easier to write power and distributed programming. Okay, so let's start my talk. My talk is about managing large GM databases. But to explain what is large GM databases, we, I have to explain something. Uh, various aspects of general data processing. So I simplify the problem. My talk is about this the input, given an input, applying a function f, then produces the output. I will, today I talk about this, and this tells everything. We can, I can enhance this framework, this program flow, and at the end of my talk, I hope you will understand how difficult this problem is. <laughs> As to enhance, enhance the example, I, I will show you an example of read alignment. Okay. So in this case, the input is first Q file, which contains gen sequences and best protein values, and function F is an alignment problem. Any alignment program, program you can imagine. The WA for time, various alignment program exist in general science. Anyone is okay. And the output is its alignment result. So, yeah, if a uh, part is just a text format, which can be sequence and just will be values. And the output now uh, contains alignment information. Uh, to which chromosome and to which position uh, the read, read data obtained by the next generation sequences uh, aligned. Uh, this screenshot is uh, generated by UTGB, University of Tokyo General Browser, developed by developed in our laboratory. Then, okay, so to show what kind of data you will be produced by next generation sequencer? I, I will do, I will be produce the cost of gene sequencing. So in 2000, the cost of gene sequence uh, is ten thousand dollars for uh, mean for produce mean mean analysis. Uh, but the cost dropped sharply in 2010. Just 
So if we want to read our genome, whole human genome sequences, and in 2000, human genome project spent much amount of money, uh, one, more than one billion dollars, to decide for genome sequences. But now we can see our genome more than one thousand dollars. If we use Illumina's genome sequencer, probably uh, we need 50x, 50 fold coverage to detect um, SNPs, uh, <coughs> homozygous or heterozygous SNPs to detect. And to detect them, 50x coverage is necessary. Um, this cost will be $15,000. So it, the target input has this amount, this set. <coughs> so now the SQ file has uh, 50x coverage human whole genome sequences. And it, uh, from my experience, it, it's not is 500 gigabytes of text data. And alignment program. If alignment program is the same, and the output will be 750 gigabytes, which contain sequences, re-sequences, and also the alignment data, which comes from uh, start position or uh, alignment data, etc. And the problem is the working test set becomes huge. Focus state, sweat space required for storing these inputs and outputs. 1.2 terabytes. And also this computation needs two to three days if using single CPUs. So we have to, we cannot write such a long day, so we have to shorten the time needed to process this alignment program and also, and also we have to, we want to reduce the stress space needed for storing this input and output. A um, simple strategy is applying compression, for example, using gzip. So if we apply gzip to fast few files, we, the size of the data will be one fifth of the original input. So 500 gigabytes of data will be 100 gigabytes of the data. And also, the output also can be reduced uh, the sum format, a uh, sum format is a de facto standard for describing alignment information. A uh, sum format has a variant called BAM, it's a binary sum format. And applying BAM compression, 750 gigabytes of data can be 180 gigabytes, almost one fourth of the original data size. So total space. So the storage space required dropped from 1.2 terabytes to 280 gigabytes. However, this kind of compression requires additional overhead for compression and decompression. Um, I, here I show simple benchmark results for applying ZZ compression and decompression. For compressing one gigabyte of data, two point five minutes are required. So for compressing five hundred gigabytes of data we need twenty hours. It's huge. It's much more time. And also unzipping and apparent and zip and zip decompression of one gigabyte data is thirty seconds. So <coughs> yeah compression and decompression takes much amount of time. So next step is to split files into several pieces. <coughs> if we split fast Q files into several parts, then applying ZZ <coughs> for each of them, we can reduce the total time needed to compress the data and also the operation can be shorter. So, by 
splitting, splitting the input data, we can easily parallelize the workflow of general analysis process. Given the input, the input is now several files. Uh, function F applied to each of input. Then output will be distributed. So we have to match the result to produce the final output. So this kind of parallelization is possible and also by using ZXP make, uh, which is developed by Professor Tawa. Um, it becomes quite fast. However, the problem is still there. Scalability and performance issues. So the number of data splits limit the power reason. Uh, so power reason I mean. If we split data into three files, only three CPUs can be used to process the data at the same time. And also, this kind of workflow needs uh, frequent access to file systems. So, zipping, the unzipping input file occurs three uh, simultaneously, uh, so producing output. So right access to disk occurs concurrently. So the first system should be tolerant for this kind of concurrent <coughs> file accesses. So if you use NFS, this kind of workflow doesn't scale well. So if you want to run this kind of workflow, you need a power file system such as Lustre, Cluster FS. So, <coughs> which is capable to handle frequent disk IOs. But I'm not sure how many people can install this kind of file system in practice. This needs some expertise in system administration. Okay, so, <coughs> however, this strategy is probably the most available because we can use existing Unix tools such as CAP, WorldCamp, or web sources, etc. We can use them without any modifications in this workflow. So function F can be any Unix command. And also other tools for processing files called data to last be the real many to exist for processing values that can be used as function M. And even if you don't have a modern, modern parallel file systems, uh, you can um, make efficient this workflow by pressing this input into some local storage, local hard drive. Then you can uh, multiply the number of disk heads to make you know, this work for tolerant for concurrent data accesses. Okay, so uh, it's next uh, I want to show a more advanced approaches for processing massive amount of data. Uh, here is an example of map use program which is proposed by Google. And there is an open source implementation called Abach Hadoop. Maybe some people use it, but I think there are some shortcomings. And so, oh, okay, anyway, I want to show how, what is map that is. Map is used the process of, um, this process consisting of map phase. Map phase applies function F to each chunk of the input file is split in the several pieces. Uh, in the previous slide, the number of files determines the power of reasons of concurrent processing. But in this case, the number of chunks, you can determine the number of chunks by yourself. So uh, we can increase the power of reason to many CPU nodes. And the functional F 
So this is particularly key and by pairs. For, um, for example, in general alignment, the key should, key should be chromosome name and start position. And in the way you have share them, so that you can sort the data according to the joint coordinate. And so what is important in MathBase is to give some program semantics uh, in taking the, the evaluation order of each function doesn't matter. You can you can so in simplest 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 case you can evaluate the input part from the top to tail. But if you use map function you you uh, you are saying input files can be split into several pieces and you can apply map function f to each piece of the data individually. And and the second step in map review is to match together the intermediate data. Um, <coughs> Combines the output. So, map reviews has to transfer the data from mapper to the users, and it transfer map reviews using intermediate files. So, to implement map reviews, you need um, frequent discussions. So file system should be capable to handle frequent disk IOs to efficiently run map reduce programs. Okay. But map reduce is not so simple as it was. Various options exist. For example, chunk size, what chunk size is appropriate? For processing functionality. And the default size chunk size is 64 megabytes, but this can be too large for some people. If you, if you have thousand of CPU cores, you have to you should use more smaller chunks to increase the power rating of the program. And also the next problem is where to store these data chunks. If the data chunks are stored into a single file, no parallelism can be obtained. So some, someone has to decide where to store the data chunks to go for this or share a system. So and also replication strategy must be considered and also input file compress or not to compress the input file should be considered. The compression and compression needs some additional overheads. And so if you store the input file as a raw text, uh, you have to face another problem. The um, problem is text based processing is very slow. Yeah. If you use some read write function in Java, you can achieve only 100 megabytes per second, which is lower than standard disk sequential reads can performance for the current hard disk drives. And also if at split by table, split by camera, which are additional overhead. So probably 50 megabytes per second is it maximum to process it if they do So because of this there was a debate on which is better map reduce or using some parallel DB database management system. Um, some database folks uh, argue map Hadoop is too slow because it has to process X data at this speed. But Google, Google, Google uh, created a counterpart. Hadoop is Indeed, slow, but Google's one is not. Because Google's map reduce uses binary format for processing text uh, input and output records. 
So, say good news. But he says good is not the good thing. Good news say they use political backpacks, uh, which uh, it produces given an object record definition. The protocol buffer creates a binary reader and writer program. So the source code generation script uh, is contained in protocol buffers. And by using this reader and writer, uh, it accelerates input and output test processing 80 times faster than simply passing text data. So this is another key. So <laughs> to improve the performance of uh, large data processing. And so I want to show you another example of how to make efficient the data processing <laughs> and by using columnar storage. Then we consider a query to find paired end with whose paired end whose insert size is larger than and yeah, so the input is the same as the input. Now, uh, I do some alignment result data with 180 gigabytes. Our program is a simple script program for extracting sound records whose insert size is rather than 300. And the output now from the main uh, start position. So simply processing 180 gigabytes of data uh, is 30 minutes. Uh, if we use 100 megabytes per second, uh, which is the standard performance for collect hard disk drives. If we use columnar storage, uh, columnar storage means Extract columns of the required, required field from the data. The amount, uh, this size is given 15 gigabytes, while the original input was 100 gigabytes data. So, in this type of, in this query, we only care about this small data set, not the entire data set. So if we have a speed, the speed is containing only the necessary columns. So this kind of query can finish in less than three minutes by by using single CPU. We can if we can use multiple CPUs we can further increase in the performance. Okay. And also the power line input and applying function f and producing the output is still the same. But input can be can vary. So we in biology we have to manage we have to use various kinds of data format. Fast fast two B some bank form, legal format for writing <laughs> graph graph data, RDA, MX, various formats exist and Every year, some people develop their own data formats, so we have to write adapters to process these data formats. But implementing distributed processing for each data set is a uh, tedious task. So I propose to use some um, adapter called LAMS. So in input data, there are kind of data sets are converted to the pre structure data and using lens. And in power and distributed system, we only care about the pre structure data. So we have to implement uh, power scale or power processing only for this pre structure data. Now, to make use of this data. Um, so, 
here is my ongoing work. Uh, I want to, I am originally a database system researcher and gradually moving to the general market field. And I want to, my, my, my goal is to develop some parallel database system for managing them. Then my system is called Gem Weaver, next generation with the NS sciences, uh, which aims to provide for various format adapters and lens for various project formats and also provide compressed binary formats. So using binary format is a key to increase the performance pixel processing. And also applying compression is also another key to reduce the space size required to hold the input output. And by developing complex and specific text database for three structured data, um, I want to implement distributed data processing over these two structured data. Selection, projection, join of various data sets and also map reduce versions. Uh, and so I also want to make this uh, query result to show and I want to see browse this query results using a UTCB and developed in our laboratory. So here is a summary of my talk. Input and function, applying function and produces an output. This writing this kind of program is very easy, but efficiently execute this process is quite complex. I'm sure you understand what is difficult. What is difficult and what has to be solved in the future. Uh, so the cost or difficulty lies in we are not sure what type of, how to represent input and output data, compressed or not, or not. So using ZZ, and using ZZ or not is a trade off between reducing storage space and data splitability and decompression time. And using plot tables data or tree structure data is another key. Because we have to handle various types of biological data formats. Using only table structure tab split data is probably impossible. So we have to extend Apache's Hadoop only handles table structure data. But we have need, for example, XML or RDF. RDF is quite flat format, but the internal data is very structured, so we have to extend the uh, single habit in the format to more general one. And also using raw text or binary format. And how to split the data. And if the input has, so the input also can be in some database, MySQL databases or BP index can be used to efficiently access the portion of the data. <laughs> so there are many variations. And also, there are another problem. I haven't explained about this, but data skill handle. So, in genome science, you frequently observe chromosome 1 has the, is the longest length. So the alignment problem needs to, for chromosome 1 is, is long, needs the longest time. So there's this skew from chromosome 1 to chromosome X. <coughs> okay, so this is the end of my presentation. So, any questions?